When my one-handed backhand wasn't working, I usually just resorted to slice. I thought that I needed to just do more repetitions and that it was simply a matter of putting in the hours and the practice. Now, I'm gonna show you five things that I really wish I had known uh, many years back, which today have made a huge difference in my game and I know they will work for you as well. So let's begin. Now, the first thing that you need to delete from your one-handed backhand is a habit that plagues almost every player. And it is what a lot of coaches recommend, but the tip of rolling your wrist on the one-handed backhand is actually very counterproductive, especially towards people who are just starting out and haven't built a good base on this shot. Every time you roll your wrist, you're shooting yourself in the foot because this causes a flimsy and weak contact point. Whereas instead, we actually want to keep the wrist up the entire time. You should get your wrist up and fixed right away as soon as you start your unit turn. We need to get into the L for leverage position. Okay, and at contact point, it is essential that the racket head does not drop below the hand because now we're going to have to make up for this flimsy and weak contact point by rolling our wrist, okay? And now we end up fanning over the ball, scraping it, and you're gonna end up plowing it everywhere except for where you intend to hit. But if you keep the wrist up, now you can do the work with your body, okay? And we can see every good player on the one-handed backhand get in the letter L for leverage position. The next thing that you can do is start staying sideways on your one-handed backhand. A lot of people are pulling the gun out of the holster or opening up a door, swinging across their body and they watch high speed tennis or they watch, you know, good juniors. And it looks like they're just, you know, opening up and spraying the ball, okay? They're opening up the fridge. They're like Jesus opening up the tomb on Easter Sunday. But if you watch high speed tennis, what we are noticing is only the recovery phase, but people aren't paying attention to what happens during contact point and every good player, the best of the best of all the rest are completely sideways at contact point so that we can get through the ball and have leverage. And it's not until the ball has left the strings that the body starts to open up in the recovery phase. Now there's two things that you can do to make it easier to stay sideways. The first thing that you can do is start stepping across your body because now it's going to be a lot easier to get sideways whereas if we hit open stance or just step straight in front of ourselves we're going to have to do a lot more work with the upper body and kind of force our shoulders back whereas if we just step across this imaginary skateboard our back is basically automatically pointing towards the net. Now, the second thing that you can do to stay sideways is use your non-hitting arm to counter your balance. So when we let go of the racket around our back pocket from the slot, you want to feel like you spread both of your arms back and spread the wings. Okay. And you want to take this to the point where it almost forms a triangle behind your back. The reason we do this is because if we just forget about the non-hitting arm, we're most likely just going to end up opening the fridge and dragging this side of our body forwards with the ball. But if you spread the wings, it will be a lot easier to stay sideways and get through the shot. The third thing that you can do is start swinging through the ball instead of focusing on trying to go up right away. If you try and swing low to high on your one-handed backhand, 
you're gonna end up skimming the ball and scraping it. You wanna feel like you go out and away from your body for as long as possible before you even come up, okay? You are gonna have to come up, but it's not gonna happen until your arm can't go forwards anymore. And we wanna feel like our hitting zone is actually level, and then we come up at the end of the swing. The more radius that we can cover, the more power that we're going to produce. As you can see, I'm a right-handed player. I'm swinging as far as I can out towards my left. And the swing path is not so much a letter C going like a Ferris wheel, but it's more like a hula hoop going around my body. So the letter C comes through and out and away from my body. So we go across that tabletop, and then when I can't go anymore out towards this direction, I come up and the ball is left to my string, so I'm still sideways, and then I open up. Now, if you find that your one-handed backhand is flying long or lacks control, it may be because you are not staying down with your legs. The most common mistake I see people make is popping up before contact point. 99% of the time, and you can watch the best of the best do this as well, we want to have our legs stay put through the swing. And it's not until the ball leaves our strings that we start to bring our legs up. Our shifting of body weight needs to be from the back to the front, but we don't want it to be from the ground to the sky, okay? So when you hit your one-handed backhand, pretend that there's a ceiling above your head and you don't really want to be bobbing up and down through the hit. And this should help your ball stay down, stay level, and you can focus on the other tips in this video and get a lot more penetration to produce a much more effective ball. The last thing on the one-handed backhand is having straight arms at contact point. If you're hitting with a bent elbow, it's gonna be very hard to strike through the ball clean and get extension because now we're gonna end up pushing the ball and arming it to get ourselves in the position that we should have started in. So from here, the beginning of the swing, we want the elbow bent to keep it close and tucked into our body but when it's time to go and explode, we want to feel like we're firing our entire arm as a lever off of our body. And we're actually driving from the shoulder instead of everything down here. Okay, and this plays into having a bent wrist, rolling the wrist, okay, flicking the lower arm. And this is actually going to lead to injury and a weaker shot. You'll be working twice as hard and producing 50% of your potential power. So remember, levers for leverage have a straight arm as you swing through the ball. I encourage you to apply these principles to your one-handed backhand and see the immediate results that will happen on the court. You can only find out the soundness of these principles through your own experimentation. In any event, thanks for tuning in and use what you've learned to play modern tennis. If you like what you learned here, I recommend taking the next step and going into my online course because it takes these concepts and builds on them and shows you a complete system for enjoying tennis for the rest of your life. You can get started by clicking the link down in the description and you can sign up on my website.